Welcome to lesson five of the Full Stack Roadmap web developer series. In this series, I take you from never having written a line of code in your life to becoming uh, someone who can actually deploy a full stack JavaScript based web application. Today, we're gonna be covering quite a few topics about the JavaScript programming language, namely functions, conditionals, and loops. And this is, you know, it might not seem like it's a lot of information, but there is so much that we could cover here when it comes to these three topics. And I'm gonna try to get through this video um, in somewhat of a timely manner, but also explain things in enough detail where we're not losing uh, any of the substance. If you wanna know more about this series, go ahead and check this video out. I explain what it's all about, what you can expect, and how it's all formatted, where you can get help, all that kind of good stuff. In today's video, like I said, we're talking about functions, conditionals, and loops. And in the previous videos, in lessons three and four, we talked about um, JavaScript variables, how do we declare and assign a variable, and then also JavaScript expressions, which includes um, all of the different operators, whether those be arithmetic operators, assignment operators, logical operators, etc. I've mentioned it a couple of times throughout this series. This series is not meant to make you an expert in JavaScript. Like I said, we're going from never having written a line of code to deploying your first full stack web application, which is a ton of ground to cover. And the purpose of this series is not so much let's make you understand every little detail of JavaScript, getting into all of the complex top topics like prototypes and hoisting and scopes and all that good stuff. I'm just trying to get you to the point where you can see what coding is all about by actually doing it. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna cover a lot of ground here um, and then we're gonna supplement it with a ton of practice problems. So I'm making a video where we're gonna have 25 JavaScript challenges and I'm gonna walk you through them and kind of explain how I'm going about solving them, what I'm thinking about. And we're gonna use the topics that we covered within this video and the previous lessons to kind of uh, solve these problems and we'll fill in a lot of the gaps that are not covered in the main content. And the last thing before we jump in, uh, be sure to use the 100 days of code hashtag on Twitter to document your progress. The best way to learn how to code is to share it in public and hold yourself accountable in Twitter uh, with the 100 days of code hashtag is a great way to do that. Be sure to tag me ZG underscore dev um, and I'll be sure to retweet and like any of the tweets to support you. All right, let's jump into conditionals in JavaScript. So we've actually covered this already um, just briefly in previous lessons. We haven't talked about how it works though. So let me show you a basic conditional statement. We're gonna say if some string, so we're talking about a string data type, is triple equals to, so we're comparing value and data type, uh, another string, so these are obviously not going to be equal because although the uh, data type is the same, the value is not. If that is the case, we're going to console.log the strings are equal. And then if it's not, we're gonna say else, and we're gonna console.log the strings are not equal. All right, so that is our basic conditional statement. When I press enter, you're gonna see that the strings are not equal. So it basically went into the second code path, that's what we kinda of call it, is the, the different paths that the code can take. So we're saying if this is equal, then I wanna execute the code within these two brackets. Otherwise, so else, we're going to execute the code between these two brackets. So there's a couple things I wanna point out here just to connect the dots for the previous lesson that we talked about. So let's just get the basic structure of an if-then statement. We have if and then else, and this is basically what we're looking at. And obviously there's indentation, uh, line breaks, all that kind of stuff, that's just formatting. But this is the basic structure. So in this parenthesis, we have a, a JavaScript expression. And then we have some brackets that contains the code for the truthy, uh, code path, so if that expression evaluates to true, and then we have a brackets uh, where we can put our code for the falsy path, um, so if the expression is false. And we've previously covered 
expressions in JavaScript um, in terms of variables. So we might have said something like, uh, I don't know, say 20 triple equals 20 and um, 50 triple equals 50. So obviously both of these are uh, going to evaluate to true and then you combine it with the and operator and the whole expression evaluates to true. And then we assign that true value to the variable right here. Now, that's all we've looked at um, in prior videos, but you can actually take this expression, which is right of the equal sign, and you can drop it into this uh, parenthesis for the conditional statement. So just a different way to use an expression. You'll see it a lot, and it's um, something that I think is worth pointing out. I'm gonna drop a couple of different ways that we can write conditionals on the screen. So it's a lot of code. We're gonna walk through each of these. Um, so let's open this up. So I've declared a couple of variables up top. So we have a number, two number variables, 20 and 10, and then a JavaScript expression, which is basically saying is the first number greater than the second number, which is going to result in true. And then we've put these in some different conditionals. So the ba most basic one that we can do is going to be uh, a basic if statement. So you don't even need to have an else statement um, at the end of this, you can just use if. And this is actually really useful. I've, you know, you'll see as you start coding when this comes into play. So we're saying if this JavaScript expression is equal to true, that's what we mean by just putting it in there. So usually you're you know, kind of getting used to seeing like an equal sign put in an expression. Well, if we're uh, looking at a Boolean, all we have to do is drop it in the parentheses and it's going to, going to evaluate to either true or false. So since this does equal to true, we would expect that this console.log statement will be reached and it'll print this expression is true. And if you come down, the first uh, console log has been printed right here. Now, moving on to the next one, we have an if else statement. I'm gonna skip over this because we just covered it. Basically, if JS expression is true, um, console.log this, otherwise this. And then finally, we can um, include other conditions. So not only can we do an if else statement, we can also add some other uh, code paths for our code to, to go down. So if this is equal to true, we want to console.log the expression is true. Else, if the first number is greater than zero, so basically what we're saying here is, let me, sorry, I closed that out there. But if the JS expression is false, we're gonna skip this first uh, block of code and then we're gonna go to the next condition. So we know if we get to the next condition, that first one is going to be false. So we know JS expression is false and then we're checking if the first number is greater than zero. If that is the case, then we're going to say the expression is false and the first number is greater than zero. But if it is false, so if the expression is false and the first number is uh, less than or equal to zero, we're going to fall into the else statement which is basically a catch-all for any other condition that we might have. So the expression is false and first number zero or less. So in this case, obviously the variable is true. So we uh, go down this first code path and you see this expression is true down here. Or I guess this, ex yeah, the expression is true. And then finally, the last one that we have is just a formatting uh, difference. So we have an if statement but we've put it all on one line. And this is just to demonstrate that we don't have to format it um, you know, all pretty like we did up here, although it helps for code readability. And in other languages, such as Python, the indentation and formatting actually does matter for running your code. But in JavaScript, it doesn't. It's more of uh, just a readability thing. The last type of conditional that you might see is called a switch case statement. And this is equivalent um, in many ways to the if, else if, else if, else if, else uh, type conditional. So if you have a lot of conditions that you're testing, then a switch case statement might be appropriate for you. So let me paste um, some code on the screen again, and we're gonna execute this. Um, the output is the color is blue, and we'll see exactly why in a second. 
So first I put an array up here and I put the indexes um, or indices on top. So the first one is an index of zero, one, two, three, four. And then we have to get a random index. So this is just uh, some code that I wrote. You don't have to understand this, but um, we're basically going to get a random number between zero and four and assign it to this random index variable. So just think of this random index variable as carrying any value between zero and four, which happens to correspond with the indexes of the colors array. Then we're going to grab a random color from the array. Um, so remember, we can get um, something from an array by passing in the index value using bracket notation. And since random index here um, carries one of those values, we can pass that in to the colors array. So this, the right side expression is going to evaluate to one of these colors, but we don't know which one because we have a random index being generated. Then we come down here and we can write some basic conditionals. So if the random color, so again, this is going to be uh, one of the array values. If it's orange, we're going to say the color is orange and then you can kind of look down here and just see it's doing the same thing for all of the different conditions. If we get to the last else statement, there was no color found, but that's never gonna happen because we uh, know that we have an index between zero and four. In this case, the color turned out to be blue, but it was a random color, random choice. We didn't know that as the developer before it happened. Now, the reason that I bring this up is because this if else if statement, where we have a lot of else ifs in here, it gets very confusing and it's tough to read sometimes. So this is why we might want something like a switch case statement and I'll show you the same code written in the switch case format. Oh, and by the way, if you're tired of getting uh, into this browser console, um, remember you just right click inspect element to get here. Um, I promise you we're gonna get to an actual code editor soon, but I just wanna keep this um, focused on JavaScript. We're not getting into setting up a local development environment yet. So anyways, here is that switch case statement. Um, same thing up here, same colors array, same random index, same random color. Obviously, since it's random, it might not be blue, which I think is the one we last saw. So let's press enter. It did turn out to be blue. Um, might have been a coincidence there. But basically what we're doing is everything's the same up here, but we come down to the switch statement. And what we're saying is that we have a switch statement and we put the expression that we're evaluating in the parentheses. So similar to the if then or, uh, or the if else statement, um, we can put in that condition into the parentheses and then we come into these little uh, brackets, which is going to contain a bunch of cases. So if the case is orange, or in other words, if the random color variable evaluates to the value of orange, then we're going to hit this code right here. And when we hit this code, sorry about that, when we hit this code, the color is orange, it's going to print that to the console, and then this break statement is a special statement that we can write to basically say, okay, I found the correct case, now stop executing the code entirely. So if we were to get the random color orange, it's going to print it to the console, and then it's gonna break, and then basically all of the rest of this code down here will never be reached because we broke out of that statement. So that's what it's doing. It's basically just going um, down the, the different cases. It's saying, okay, what is random color equal? Does it equal orange? No, okay, does it equal green? No, does it equal yellow? No, purple, no. And then we finally get to blue, which it does equal. And so it's going to console log that and then break out of the uh, switch case statement. Now there's this last condition down here, which is called default. And this is basically the catch-all. This is the else statement uh, in our conditional. And it's saying if random color does not evaluate to any of these cases, let's go to the default value, which we're just gonna say no color is found. So that is the basic switch case statement. Let me write this, uh, let me refresh. And I'm gonna write this in a little bit simpler format. So we have switch, and then here we have case, um, or the different cases and then the break statements. So this is obviously not valid, but we have a switch 
then we put our condition in here, which can be any JavaScript expression, and then between the brackets, we put all of the different cases. So, switch, state, or switch case statements, how often are you gonna use them? Well, in my uh, experience, I haven't used them a ton. Usually an if statement or an if else statement is going to be sufficient. And oftentimes, if you start using too many uh, switch case statements, there's, that's kind of an indication that you may not be writing the most efficient code. But that's to worry about later. Uh, right now, I just want you to kind of be aware of this, understand how it works, and uh, just be familiar when you look it up and try to use it for the first time. That's it for the first part of this video. We're gonna talk about loops next.